If you like our content, please like, subscribe, and click the notification bell to get alerts when we introduce new videos. Welcome to the demonstration series for the Smart Zone controller based on a high scale deployment of the 5.2 Smart Zone release. The videos in this series will show you the basic configuration of many aspects of the controller. In this video, I will provide a demonstration on configuring a dynamic pre shared key wireless LAN and generated keys for clients within the Smart Zone controller. So let's get started. I have already logged into a Smart Zone instance using a super admin account. We can observe that it is a high scale instance and it is the 5.2 Smart Zone release. Under the grouping in the middle, we can see that there are a few partner domains and subdomains already configured. Clicking on the first partner domain, we can see that there are zones configured under it, which we will be using to configure and creating our dynamic pre-shared key wireless LAN in this demo. Because pre-shared key or DPSK is specific to a wireless LAN configured for DPSK, we have to first configure a wireless LAN that supports the DPSK option. I'm going to quickly create a wireless LAN and show the specifics that are needed to deploy a DPSK wireless LAN. First, I will navigate to the wireless LANs and select the zone where I want my wireless LAN to be configured. Once the configuration window opens, I will name the wireless LAN and then jump down to the encryption options, which is where DPSK is configured for a wireless LAN deployment. Notice as I move through the encryption methods, the DPSK option will appear under the WPA2 and the WPA mixed methods, allowing us to configure either an internal or external DPSK deployment. In this video, we will keep it simple and create the internal DPSK. However, you can use an external DPSK solution as well when deploying DPSK wireless LANs. Once I select WPA2 or WPA Mixed, I have the option to enable DPSK and so I will select the internal option. Once selected, you can specify the DPSK length and type you would like to use with this wireless LAN. Now you can see why DPSK is specific to the wireless LAN because each might have their own requirements which will require the correct dynamic keys to be generated. I will select a smaller value here in the length field and will change the type to numbers only for this demonstration. Lastly, we can select how long we will allow the DPSKs to be used with this wireless LAN before the client will need to obtain a new key. Between all the options here, I will, in this demonstration, I will set it for one week from the first time of use. One last thing we will need to do here is generate a passphrase as the default key before it can be saved. This passphrase will typically never be used because clients will be using their DPSKs, so we will want to generate a complex value to minimize the possibility of someone guessing it. I will set it to a large complex key before I save the wireless LAN. Now that the wireless LAN has been configured, we can migrate to clients and then dynamic PSKs and select the zone where the wireless LAN was configured to generate our DPSK values that we will be using to distribute to our clients. This process can either be done by downloading a sample CSV files as we can see here, populating it with values needed and then uploading it to this zone, or we can click on the generate a DPSK button and generate a small sample of values. Here, we can either select a specific DPSK enabled wireless LAN, or if only one is configured in this zone, it will already be populated in the first field. Second, we can enter the amount of keys we want to generate, and then we can label these keys. This allows you to manage the keys easier and disable them if needed due to someone leaving or they no longer need it. Note that if you generate more than one key, the option to specify key value is removed and they will be auto-generated based on the criteria that is set forth in the wireless LAN settings. Note that all keys generated in bulk will have the same name but can be changed once you assign the keys. Optional user role and VLAN ID assignments can be configured for these set of keys as well. 
If a VLAN is not specified, the client will be assigned to the VLAN associated with the wireless LAN itself. Lastly is the option to make these DPSK values a group DPSK. That means that it can be used by more than one device and causes the key value not to be bound to a specific MAC address. Once the configuration is complete, we click Generate. This causes the desired amount of keys and their random key values to be generated and once completed, we can see there is an option to download the key values in the same window. Once these are downloaded, we can then share these keys out to clients to be used when they are connecting to this DPSK wireless LAN. Once the file is downloaded, we can open and we can see all the entries that we just generated, the five that we have here. Each will have their unique passphrase that then can be passed out to clients that we want to have access to this DPSK wireless LAN. As mentioned earlier, you can now select the username in the list and you can have the option to change that name value making it easier to identify the client that is using that key value. When the client attempts to connect to our DPSK enabled wireless LAN, they will be prompted for a key. The DPSK value assigned to them should be entered and the smart zone will use that value against the DPSK database and will allow them to connect the client if their key is active and is not expired. Notice that we can select one or more of these entries and choose the export and giving us a CSV value which will have details of each entry including the DPSK signed to that entry. If any entry needs to be removed causing the key to no longer be valid you can select the entry and then press delete. Do know that if the user is currently connected it will not cause them to lose their connection, but will eliminate their ability for them to connect again. If you need to remove the client, you can go under the Clients tab, find the user, and then select the Deauthorize button in combination with the Disconnect button as well. Thank you for taking the time to watching this demonstration. Music